In this video, I'll describe the various different ways you can make themed puzzles using Crossword Compiler. The type of themed puzzles you can make is going to depend a little bit on how many theme words you have, which could be anything from just two or one even, up to having tens of thousands. And the type of puzzle that it's combinatorically possible to create will obviously depend on the number of words that you have. So if you have a relatively small number, and you definitely want to use them, and you want to just have your theme words, then the thing to do is make a freeform vocabulary puzzle. If you select that option, there's a whole separate video on making these in detail, so I'm not going to go through the details here. If you've got a moderate number, I could paste in, say, some dogs. You can build the puzzle, and this will only use the theme words that you put in, and it's used 11 out of 12 of them. If you're desperate to use all of them, you can increase the puzzle size. So go to two squares larger, it'll make a slightly larger, and now we've used 12 of 12. Now we've used all of our words and we can write the clues. You can of course also make um, a themed puzzle from somewhat larger themed list that's provided. So here, instead of using my own list of dogs, I could use this larger provided list of dogs. And if I do this, of course, I'll get rather more dog words fitting in, but not all of them because I have 191. I have to start with a very large grid to fit all 191 words in. But what about if you want to make a more traditional newspaper style puzzle using some themed words? Well, there are actually several different ways of doing that, again, depending on the number of words that you have. Uh, so to start with, let's just say we've got a couple of keywords we want to use. We want to use them as themes in the grid. So one way to do that is just start an empty grid, type in your theme words, and then fill around them using autofill or fill grid. If you have the pro grid filler, you can also start an American or cryptic puzzle, choose your grid pattern, and then select this fit theme words button. That will then look at all the available grid patterns and find one that will fit your small number of theme words. This will look for fitting all of your theme words. So it's not realistic to put a large number of words in here. So I might put, say, the first three of my dog names, and I definitely want to have as a way of seeding the grid with good theme words. If I click OK, it then looks through the grids, and you'll get a list of grids that fit with my words in. You'll notice here that they're placed more or less randomly. You can generate different random fields by going here or click the new random fit button and you'll see that there's lots of permutations in most of these grids for fitting these three theme words. If you want a slightly nicer symmetric layout, you can click this place symmetrically option in the fit theme words window. If you've got three theme words that need to go in order because perhaps their words appear in the name of a movie or a book or something, you can click place in order. But for these dogs, it doesn't really matter which order they appear in the grid. But if you want to place symmetrically, oh, it does find there's no fit. If you do need to have symmetrical placement, you are going to have to be a little bit more careful about your choice of words. In particular, it's much easier to place words symmetrically if they have the same length. So a better choice, perhaps, as your theme words might be where at least two of them are the same length. So if I have Pomeranian and Rottweiler, which have the same length, then there's a much greater chance of being able to fit them into the grid symmetrically. Now if I press Build, I do indeed get a symmetrical fill. And here this word and this word are the same length. As you can see, and it's put the third word in the slot in the middle here. So you may have to mess around a little bit, but it will find a number of different solutions that make quite nice fills. It's also possible if you have a lot of these theme words, it makes it impossible to fill around. You can click this fill around button here, which will just check that it's possible. And indeed here it is possible. And if you like the fill, you could just click accept, or you can cancel it and go and fill the grid using some other method yourself. So that was a feature of the ProGrid filler for finding a grid to fit a small number of theme words. Another way that you can create a themed puzzle is by doing a standard automatic fill, but using two word lists, one which is a theme list and one which is a backup list. So here you won't just use your theme words, it'll take a combination of the two fitting as many theme words as it can. 
This will work a bit better with a more open grid than American. So I'm going to start with a quick, cryptic or quick grid. Let's start with 15 by 15. Uh, you just choose some grid pattern. It's going to be a bit easier to fill if you choose one with uh, more words, because more words usually means shorter words, which means fewer intersections. So if you want to make your life easier, you can choose, choose one with slightly more words at the bottom here. But for the purpose of filling from two word lists, it, you should also be able to fit fairly complex grids. So let's select that one, and then you click Fill Grid with Custom Options. Now you'll notice that at the top here, you get to choose a word list, which is all your main large word lists. You have to use one of these. These are word lists that are large enough to fill grids on their own. But there's also an option to choose a theme word list. So here, I could select the dogs theme word list. Now when I build the puzzle, it will fit words from the dogs list where it can, and where it needs to use another word, it will take one from the default list. There's an option for the number of theme words, which you can normal, or if you're really keen to have as many as possible, you can click maximum. Or if you don't want to overdo it, you could click the mild option. So let's try with maximum, fill the grid, and you'll see that it's filled the grid with a mixture of words from your theme word list and the main word list, where these blue words are the ones that are in the theme list. If you look at the status bar here, you'll see that it tells you the theme words is 12 out of 32. So these kind of grid patterns are much harder to fill. They're much more constrained. So it's not going to be possible to make it entirely from your own theme words. So you're never going to be able to use a very high fraction, usually, of your theme words in this kind of fill. But it's done a pretty good job. It's fit 12 out of 32 of them in. And of course, you can use the usual options to refill from the beginning if you don't like the fill, generate a new fill, and so on. I've been using themed word lists to make or look at or review or edit your word list to you go to the word list manager on the words menu. And on the left, you get the main word list. There's a tab here. But if you click on this tab here, theme lists, that will show you the list of theme lists. So here you can view the list you've got. You can edit them as you wish. If you want to make a new one, you can just type in a new word name here. So my dogs, for example. And then you can type in your words if you want to start with some other list you could copy all those go back to my dogs paste them in edit it add your new words and your word list will be saved so you can then use it for a themed fill if you want to make a larger word list like the birds list or the cities list you go to the main word list tab and here you could edit on the right you can click the add button to add words or if you want to, you can convert a theme list to a main word list using uh, convert theme list option up here. But normally theme lists should be short text files. They don't need scores, so they can just be simple files that you edit or add here in the theme word list selection. Any word list that you make here should then be listed in the fill grid window and you can use them for doing a combined themed fill. If you have slightly more theme words, then of course you can actually attempt to fill a grid entirely using your theme list. So the sort of threshold of the number of words you need for filling your own grid entirely from your themes words would be a sort of five, ten thousand. So if we go to the word list manager, this is where you could make a large uh, themed word list. Some examples are available in the additional word lists. For example, cities here is about 4,400 words. There's also a list of birds and there are some other ones. So these, you might have a sporting chance of filling a grid, as long as it's relatively easy to fill. So let's try with a cryptic or quick, 15 by 15. And now I'm going to try and deliberately choose a, a grid that's relatively easy to fill. So 37 words. If I use that selected grid pattern, now go to fill grid with custom options, I could choose one of these theme word lists, cities, say, and click build. And in this case, it has actually managed to fill the entire grid just using the cities. 
But you'll notice, of course, that because the cities list is quite big, a lot of these cities are actually rather obscure. There probably aren't many people who know Pori, which I think is a city in Finland, uh, and Stavanger. Well, Stavanger perhaps is a bit more well known, but there's an, certainly an awful lot of words, places I don't know where they are in here. So there's a trade off between familiarity, number of words, and fillability, and how many words you're going to have to put in from some other kind of word list. If you wanted to take something a bit more manually um, to guide which of the words are used from this list, perhaps using some other words by hand yourself, you can also do that with a little bit more manual control. So if I go to grid, delete all letters, just start with an empty grid, I could use auto find, which uses the words in change list usage. So the cities list is already there, that's fine. If it wasn't available, I could add it to my auto find list. So if I click anywhere in this grid, I, I will see matches, right click to open auto find to see um, the words available. And if I click on the cities list, that will show me the theme words. And I can, on a slot by slot basis, decide whether there's somewhere well enough known that I want to use it. Or Folkestone, perhaps, certainly if your British is well known, um, and use that. And you'll keep, you can keep going this way, and you'll find, of course, as you as your grid becomes more constrained, it's going to become harder and harder uh, to use just uh, well-known places. If you want the default word list to be cities, you can go to change list usage um, over here, go to word finding and change the default word list. So if I change the default word list to cities, that will then search the cities list by default, so I don't have to keep changing the word list. So now cities is the word list that's opened by default. Groningen sounds all right. Oh, but here I'm stuck. There's no cities that will fit. So here I'm going to have to use one of the other word lists if I want to go this route. But that may be fine. I might be quite happy to have a few hand-picked word lists. So for example, firm or film are both words that one could probably write a clue about in the context of cities because cities have firms in, and there, of course there are films about lots of cities. So there are ways of adapting themes to adapt for other kinds of words as well that's not strictly in the list that you started from. And again, you're now finding that there is no city here. This is a probably a rather less desirable selection of words. So at this point, by hand, you will be stuck with going back and changing one of these options here. So you could press Shift plus Delete to delete that word slot. Have a look at the other options here. Uh, probably was also a bit obscure, but it can be done by hand if you want to persevere. Uh, the final option, of course, is if you have the professional grid filler, you could use manual word selection. So if I go to fill grid and do a themed fill using the default list and the cities list. So the cities list was not a theme word list. It was one of the larger main word lists. So I select it in this slot on the right here. Now I can select manual word selection if you have the Pro Grid Filler installed. This will now analyze the grid in more depth so that you get the choice of your theme words uh, closer to the top and it will also check the intersections for you so that you don't end up in a dead end quite so quickly. So maybe I'm going to start in Mannheim. I can have mob, as a mob fifth famous in some cities and so on. And if you don't like this choice of next word to do, you can just click on the grid somewhere else. So actually, if I want to try and choose this word to get a nice city up here first, I could do that. So Guatemala City would be a good slot perhaps for that one. Agra, that looks fine. So if I want to choose something here, there are no cities, but I can try and find something um, which I could clue relating to a city uh, in the usual way. Well. My big Ben, maybe I can relate that to the word Ben, and so on. It'd be better actually to start in this case with a grid that didn't have so many three-letter words in to make life a little bit easier. Um, so this way you can go through uh, and manually choose the balance of cities, how well they're known, or choosing other words if you have to. If you get bored, you can click auto pick and it'll try and fill the whole lot for you. And again, you know, you've got some mixture of theme words and 
standard default word list words. And finally, you can, of course, just choose grid patterns uh, manually to fit small numbers of key uh, theme words if you want to. So if you've got a, a really good dog that you want to use, and you know it's 15 letters, you can go down this list, checking the word distribution down here, and check that there's a 15 letter word slot. So this one has three, so that will do. If I use that selected grid pattern, then press cancel, I can now just type words into the grid myself. So I could type, I don't know, golden, golden retriever across there, and I've got my theme word placed. And then you can go on and do a automatic fill or choose some other custom word list um, or whatever as you like. And that's about it for this video about the various different ways of making themed puzzles.